Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, hi, welcome everyone. Welcome back to this NPTEL MOOCs course on developing soft skills and personality from IIT Kanpur. I am Ravichandran. I am giving you this course from the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences. We are on week 6 and this week I started discussing about communication skills. I started uh, with the need for effective communication and then I went ahead to talk about the barriers to communication. Under barriers, we particularly focused initially on the ones which come out of sender and receiver's personality. We analyzed that uh, deeply and also we tried to find out some uh, overcoming strategies uh, to confront these barriers. And then I talked to you about uh, how you can deal with interpersonal uh, barriers. And then followed by that, I looked at miscommunication, especially in terms of the barriers that come in organizational setup. Now, towards the conclusion of this week, I would like to focus on nonverbal communication, that is body language. Some of you have been actively uh, waiting to listen to this lecture. Uh, many already asked when uh, this is going to come, but in this lecture and the next one, instead of introducing the concept to you, I am just going to use a pre-thinking assessment method and before I go to that, so in this uh, uh, module that is fifth module and lecture number 35 and lecture number 36, I am just going to use two uh, pre-thinking assessment activity before I will actually start the concepts of body language which will come in the following week, week 6. And as usual before I start the lecture for uh, today, let us take a brief recapsulation of whatever I did it in the previous lecture. The previous lecture particularly focused on miscommunication. Miscommunication is arising usually because of misperception. These are instances of action transaction failure. Communication flowing through formal channels like downward, horizontal and upward we discussed and then mostly in downward and upward there are possibilities of miscommunication and within these uh, uh, channels the forms of communication which are flowing through formal channels are in written mode, oral mode and electronic mode. Electronic mode we had spent more time before also. And within this again we looked at some of the barriers to information flow in organizations such as the ones which will arise out of administrative hierarchy, long lines of communication, too many transfer stations and even lack of trust that is between the management and the workers. We looked at two interesting illustrative examples for one message distortion in downward communication and two miscommunication in product evolvement. Now coming to today's lecture, I am going to do a pre-thinking assessment and if you remember in the first lecture, I was telling you, you need to relearn, you need to redo, you need to undo, lot of misgivings, misperceptions, mislearnings you might have had about some of the concepts related to communication in general about soft skills and more about body language. Everybody thinks that they know what is nonverbal communication and they have been using it very effectively. But some of your uh, errors in perceptions, misconceptions can be corrected by asking you some questions and then clarifying your misconceptions by answering those questions. Now, the objective of this lecture is to check your existing knowledge about body language and to clear certain misconceptions about nonverbal communication. How am I going to do this? I am going to use a simple quiz method, a true or false method like the ones which you are actually answering in the assignments, five questions generally are in true or false method. Now, in this one, I am going to ask you the question and then there are some correlative pictures, you can take a look at the picture also. And before we start, 
okay you may even pause for a minute and then go to your uh, your desk or some place where you have kept a notebook or at least a piece of paper a pen or a pencil and then again sit before the video and then resume now as i give you the questions so we have about 15 questions you need to mark true or false you just write one say true or false okay and let your answers be spontaneous when i ask just think about it i'm just going to repeat it once again and then as i repeat it give the answers and then we'll go to the next one avoid pausing it and thinking for a long time go with the pace in which i am going to conduct the quiz okay so that will make me understand how spontaneously you are able to respond to your own notions about body language and in general about non verbal communication are you ready shall we start okay let's start as i said it's going to be just true or false questions uh, i hope you have taken a piece of paper or your notebook and you are ready with pen or pencil look at the first question you just have to say true or false women have natural sensitivity towards body language than men think about it just say true or false i repeat and after i repeat and i finish i'll go to the next one and you should have finished your answer women have natural sensitivity towards body language than men i hope you have written either true or false let me go to the next one question number 2 a dishonest person avoids eye contact so eye contact is looking eye to eye think about the answer write it after i repeat a dishonest person avoids eye contact i hope you have written the correct answer i am going to the next one the third question the more space a person occupies the more power he enjoys the more space a person occupies the more power he enjoys just say true or false shall i go to the next one question number 4 sitting lower than the other person with whom you are interacting indicates dominance or authority so two people are there you are the one who is sitting lower than the other person with whom you are interacting and if you sit lower the question is is it indicating dominance or authority you have to say true or false i hope you have answered this also i am going to the next one fifth question one shows traits of aggressiveness while sitting with his legs on a desk with his hands clasped behind his head especially before someone think about it as i repeat give the answer one shows traits of aggressiveness while sitting with his legs on a desk with his head clasped behind his head especially before someone just say true or false i'm going to the next one looks like a simple one the sixth question crossing the heads legs or the ankles is a defensive gesture i repeat crossing the hands legs or the ankles is a defensive gesture shall i go to the next one okay question number 7 steepling with the fingers especially like steepling with the fingers and hands show confidence steepling with the fingers and hands show confidence say true or false let's go to the next one eighth one smoking a cigarette especially before an interview or such activity is considered a sign of anxiety or nervousness listen carefully 
smoking a cigarette, especially before an interview or such activity. So, interview or any such tense activity, you have to participate in group discussion, you have to give a presentation, you are being assessed by people. So, especially before such activity, if you smoke a cigarette, is considered a sign of anxiety or nervousness. Just say true or false. Okay. I am going to the next one. Ninth one, resting your head in the palm of your hand indicates interest in the subject. Resting your head in the palm of your hand indicates interest in the subject. Say true or false. I am going to the next one. Showing your thumbs up indicates a successfully completed job or victory. Seems to be a very easy one. Showing your thumbs up indicates a successfully completed job or victory. I hope you have done this correctly. Next one. Babies, question number 11, babies are more sensitive to body language than adults, babies are more sensitive to body language than adults, just say true or false and let us go to the next one. This is uh, question number 12 specifically on nonverbal communication. Nonverbal communication is less intense and impactful than verbal communication. Listen to the question carefully. Nonverbal communication is less intense and impactful than verbal communication. Shall I move on to the next one? Question number 13. 13. When we stop talking to somebody verbally, we stop the entire communication itself. So, this question focuses on an important aspect of verbal communication that is it is saying that when we stop talking to somebody verbally, we stop the entire communication itself. Just say true or false. I move on to the next one. This is about involuntary body language that is some of your behavior that comes out without your knowledge you are not able to control it, some of your movement, some of your expressions, the body language itself. Involuntary body language reveals a person's inner thinking or feelings. I repeat question number 14, involuntary body language reveals a person's inner thinking or feelings. Just say true or false. Let us move on to the next one. It is an interesting one about time perception the way we perceive times. Question number 15, people maintain their appointments and meet deadlines according to their perceptions of time. Question number 15, people maintain their appointments and meet deadlines according to their perceptions of time. I hope you have done it, this is the last one. And now, I will start giving you the answers and for each correct answer, just give one mark. So, each wrong answer, it is 0. Okay. Let us start assessing, let us look at the answers. The first one, women have natural sensitivity towards body language than men. The answer is true, women intrinsically, basically essentially have natural sensitivity towards body language than men. They can naturally sense that somebody is good, somebody is bad. They can immediately sense in an environment that it is dangerous, it is risky than men. So, they, uh, they are more perceptive in terms of uh, cues which are around us and then they are able to make quick uh, information, interpretation based on that. So, they have the natural sensitivity towards body language compared to men. Question number 2, a dishonest person avoids eye contact, it is true. All honest people try to look eye to eye, 
Okay. In fact, we have idioms like uh, people when they do not like each other or when they are not honest with each other. So, we say that they do not see eye to eye. So, they avoid eye contact. So, it is usually considered that a dishonest person is the one who avoids eye contact. So, keep one mark for the right ones. If you have got it wrong, just give 0. Look at the third one. The more space a person occupies, the more power he enjoys. The answer is true. Look at the highest person in the company, let us say CEO, he occupies the maximum space for his office and look at the lowest worker who sits in a cubicle and lower than that worker, somebody like a watchman, he sits outside and then only a stool that is the space that is given for him. So, you can easily see that depending on the power, space is given to the person. Question number 4, some of you might have not got it correctly, but that is ok. Sitting lower than the other person with whom you are interacting indicates dominance or authority, it is false because usually the ones who are dominating or the ones who want to show power, show authority, they always try to sit higher than you. They try to give you that over domineering posture and usually the person who is lower in position. So, bends, sits low. Okay. So, even he sits down letting the other person sit above. So, that indicates the power dynamics between a higher officer and a lower one. The fifth one, one shows traits of aggressiveness while sitting with his legs on a desk with his hands clasped uh, behind his head, especially before someone. It is really very highly aggressive as some bosses used to do before their secretaries, before their employees, just they want to show that they are the real bosses and then they sit in a very aggressive manner as I have shown it in the picture, it is true. So, I hope you are giving 1 mark for the right answers and 0 for the wrong one. Question number 6 is also true, crossing the hands, legs or the ankles is a defensive gesture. So, all crossings are generally considered defensive compared to all open ones like open palms, even the feet which are open protruding towards the person in the front. So, these are all open gestures as against defensive one. You defend yourself when you are not sure about the other person when you are insecure about the other person, when you feel that the other person is trying to intrude into your privacy, you become defensive. It is like the animal instinct, instinct of birds, when you go close to them, they will try to protect themselves. So, they will use defensive gesture. The seventh one is interesting again, the answer is true. Steepling with the fingers, like uh, if you hold it like this and then uh, even towering position steepling with the fingers and hands show confidence, yes. People who are not confident, they will try to put the hands inside the pocket, they will put the hands behind them, they will, uh, the hands will be uh, very much upright, so they will be uh, pinching their hands, okay. So, the hands uh, will do so many things other than keeping it free or holding it uh, together in a steepling position. So, that actually indicates confidence, right. Eight is also true, smoking a cigarette or even for instance chewing some gum okay, or even for that instance the compulsive need to think that you need a cup of tea before you go for the interview. Now, all these things and more so in case of smoking a cigarette is considered a sign of anxiety or nervousness. So, this, this is a kind of compulsive addiction, you think that only if you have it, you will be able to overcome the nervousness or anxiety. So, you do that. Even people uh, take some small pecks of drink on such situations just to control their nervousness. So, these are all considered a sign of anxiety or nervousness. 
Question number 9, the answer is false. The question is resting your head in the palm of your head indicates interest in the subject. Actually, as you could see in the picture that I have given, they have completely lost interest, they are completely distracted, they are, they are not sure of what they are doing. So, resting your hand in the uh, palm indicates lack of interest. So, you feel bored, rather it indicates boredom. So, the answer is false. Tenth one is the easiest one perhaps, because in all culture, all language, so when we show thumbs up, people understand it is a ve job well done, uh, it indicates victory. So, even in uh, today you have in uh, uh, for example, Facebook, WhatsApp, you have the icon thumbs up just to indicate that congrats, you did a good job, okay, good, you have done it. Okay. Now, babies are very interesting. So, they are more sensitive to body language than adults, it is true. So, if you look at babies, so they are more focused on uh, the parents, particularly the mother and they are more sensitive to body language. They want the attention of the mother all the time on them. So, if the mother talks to somebody, if the mother uh, watches TV, the baby will try to even push her head, okay, face towards the baby. So, it would like to have the entire attention and they are more sensitive to body language. Uh, they can sense the body language of the parents, of friends, of good people and then immediately somebody who is bad, somebody who does not like the child picks it, the baby will start crying immediately. Okay, they can see the difference in warmth. So, they are more sensitive than even adults. Now, generally about nonverbal communication, uh, the question says that is less intense and impactful than verbal communication. The answer is false. It is the other way around. Either it is equally intense and impactful and in many cases, it is more intense and more impactful than verbal communication. Okay. So, nonverbal can be much more uh, effective than verbal. 13, when we stop talking to somebody verbally, we stop the entire communication itself. Now, the answer is false because when we think that we have stopped talking to someone verbally, we actually start communicating with the person non-verbally. We use more of our body language. Okay. So, we stop talking, but then we just while going and if we are living in the same room, we just kick the door, we make lot of noise, we play the music player with very high volume. We do everything to create tension, annoy the person using our non-verbal communication, although we stop talking to the person. Now, in 14, involuntary body language reveals a person's inner thinking or feelings. The answer is absolutely true. And this is the trickiest part of uh, body language, which we will spend more uh, in the coming lectures. The voluntary body language such as saying namaste, shaking hand, they simply reveal the formal aspect of communication, but the involuntary body language, things which you do without your knowledge, okay, your, your eyes dilating and contracting about which I will discuss later and your movement of hand, your movement of legs and all that and your facial expressions which comes without your knowledge. So, they actually reveal your inner thinking or feelings. And the last one, it is about time perception. People maintain their appointments and meet deadlines according to their perceptions of time. Yes, absolutely true. We are going to discuss about uh, this monochronic and uh, polychronic time perspective. The one who has the monochronic time perspective thinks that time is linear, time is budgeted like the Europeans and Americans and the ones who believe that it is polychronic, they think that time is at your disposal and then things can be postponed endlessly. They do not plan, they allow things to come and interfere. 
So, we will talk about that and then uh, uh, right now you understand that people have actually different perceptions of time depending on the culture and depending, depending on the mindset that you have developed. Now, the conclusion your score analysis just check the total give 0 for wrong answers and add up to the total. If you have scored 13 to 15 you are already in an outstanding level in terms of your perceptions about human in terms of body language in terms of nonverbal communication. If you are even 10 to 12 you are very good 7 to 9 is good 4 to 6 is average now you really need to improve your nonverbal communication skills not that who are in outstanding level need not do that because there is so much to improve in terms of uh, nonverbal communication and body language they can uh, enhance they can hone their skills further but the ones who are 4 to 6 and below 2 to 4 or even 0 to 2 which is poor you desperately need to improve your uh, skills in terms of nonverbal communication because you might be uh, behaving in a manner or you might be understanding the manner in which somebody behaves to you not correctly or you make misinterpretation of some body language you give wrong communication of your body language so that is the one that is indicated when it is below uh, 6 but don't lose heart so uh, we, i'll have one more uh, test to pre-check your knowledge and then i want to undo all your uh, misgivings and then after that we'll go to the theory part with some very interesting illustrations but that will help you gain confidence and know something about body language and try to enhance your soft skills and personality in terms of that thank you for watching this video have a good day start looking at people from this body language perspective it will enhance your communication skills thank you once again